Welcome to Diversity TV. My name is Ransom Pal and I'm your host for today. Today we're here at the location of the Edmonton Public Library, the newly built one. As you can see behind me, there's a digital wall that features in a career. Art is such a therapeutic way to deal with the daily stresses and anxiety of life. October 10th was celebrated as World Mental Health Day at the London Dairy Mall in Edmonton. Diversity Health and Wellness commentator Lola Orofemi went to London Dairy Mall to check out the artworks being sold to raise money for the Canadian Mental Health Association. Mental health is not an oak. It is real like the air we breathe. Today is a World Mental Health Day and WHO theme this year for mental health is invest in your mental health. So my name is Lolo Lauren Femi. I am the founder and CEO of DSGL Consulting. I am the health and wellness commentator for uh, Diversity TV. I'm here at the London Dairy Mall speaking to Vanessa. Hi, Vanessa. Hi. Nice to have you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you for having me. I have some questions for you here. Um, why, why, why mental health this year? Um, so it's always been something that I've wanted to uh, do along with the mall. Um, and I was in talks with Canada, Canadian Mental Health Association for a while. And we were trying to figure out how we can do something to, you know, promote such um, World Mental Health Day and just kind of make this a conversation that people can start talking about um, and let everyone know that's not a taboo subject. It, it affects so many people. Um, and we wanted to do it uh, through art because we felt that art was the way that a lot of people cope with mental health um, uh, issues on the daily. It helps them get through and yeah, that's right. kind of why we decided to do this. Well, thank you so much. Um, why art among all the things in yeah. the mall? Yeah, yeah. So I mean, just from my own perspective, art is just such a therapeutic um, way to deal with the daily stresses and anxieties of life. Mm -hmm. um, and I found that when I spoke with the Canadian Mental Health Association, they knew of a lot of artists locally here in Edmonton who also used art to um, help them out with their um, their mental health journeys, mm -hmm. especially in the last little while dealing with COVID and everything, which is actually the theme of a lot of the art here is their struggles through the past year and how they're dealing with it. Thank you very much. And how does this how can this community support uh, your art here? And how, how does that help the community here in Edmonton? Yeah, absolutely. So um, if you're looking to donate and get involved with the Canadian Mental Health Association, this is a great way all of these artworks that you see over here are actually for sale. They're on a bidding process. So if you just scan the code over here, you can go onto a website okay. and it'll allow you to bid on these pieces. 50% mm -hmm. uh, of the money that we raise goes back to the artist and 50% goes to the Canadian Mental Health Association. So it's a wonderful way to help a really good cause, especially on World Mental Health Day. Oh, well, thank you so much. It's nice having you. So this is the code. If you want to come to London Dairy Mall, there's a, code, there's a barcode here where you scan and you can bid on any of this artwork. So my name is Lolo Lauren Femi, and I know that mental health is real. And this is, will be the take home for everyone from the micro level to the macro level. Mental health is real, just like your financial health, your physical health is important to you, your emotional health invest in your mental health because that is the block that controls everything about you till next time i hope to talk to you soon take care of your mental health it is real like the hear you breathe we need it all have a great day this week for our diversity small business special we highlight calgary-based friendly and award-winning desjardins insurance and financial services agency owned and managed by neva pirut Good afternoon, my name is Neva Parat. I'm the owner of Desjardins Insurance, location at 33, 33 17th Avenue Southwest. And what we do here is help people with their auto, home, life, disability and critical illness. So we help you with the everyday challenges and also the challenges that you may face in the future. Thank you. In a new recent study, it was found that Black Canadians are more likely than other Canadians to seek treatment and experience layoffs due to the virus, according to research carried out by the Edmonton-based African Canadian Civil Engagement Council and Innovative Research Group. The group looked at the health and economic impacts of COVID-19 from the perspectives of Black Canadians and those in the broader Canadian population. 
In August 2020, Edmonton's warehousing sector expanded when Amazon opened a second warehouse distribution center, employing more than 600 full-time workers in packaging, sorting, boxing, and other modern warehouse jobs. Amazon and other warehouse distribution centers across our border and beyond are looking to hire skilled workers right away. The Alberta government wants to support newcomers with training for modern warehouses like Amazon. The key workplace essential skills training, Quest program, offered by Solomon College, is offering free training to newcomers eager to find warehouse employment in Edmonton. Solomon College will help trainees learn warehouse technology, provide workplace certificates in forklift operation, WMIS, and first aid, and help them prepare to find a job with companies like Amazon. For more information, please go to www.solomoncollege.ca. You have a headset and then you go, it, it tells you where to go. So you don't need to read, it tells you go to this aisle, and then of course you'll, you'll be lifting heavy product and you'll need to place it on there. This is the uh, Quest program, the Key uh, Workplace Essential Skills Training Program at Solomon College. So uh, we will uh, give an eight, eight weeks of training, or four weeks will be in class, and then another four weeks where we will uh, support uh, students uh, in their interview process and, and getting jobs. Hopefully they'll be working in distribution centers uh, and uh, warehouses. Okay, so, all right, I'll have to, I'll have to log in, but um, essentially what you'll we'll do is you'll have product with a barcode, right? Okay, and you scan it, beep, mm -hmm. okay. Um, but first you have a function. Maybe you're, you're, you want to move this to a shelf, so you scan the, the area where you take, you're taking it from, you scan the product, and then you type in the number, so however many you're moving it, and then you scan it to the location. When you do it all online, it's easier uh, because you only, you only need, if the, if the barcode's correct, you only need to scan the barcode, and then you're, you're, you're reducing your errors, right? If, if you have to, you don't have to count every single item, so usually it, it's, uh, it's supposed to reduce human error, and that's as you, that's usually where a lot of, uh, where the company loses a lot of money. Finding food is a daily challenge for the poor and the underprivileged in our communities. Our community organization in Edmonton, Canadian United Action, came up with a way of providing food to the homeless and needy through a food truck. Diversity TV stopped by to check it out. My name is Diki Dikamba. I'm uh, the executive director of uh, Canavoa. Canavoa is Canadian Volunteers United in Action Society, Association de Volontaires Unis dans l'Action au Canada. So uh, we are an organization promoting and enhancing volunteering in our community. And uh, we are running a francophone food bank. So today uh, is a special day because we're gonna launch a new program. It's gonna be Canavoa Community Food Truck. As you see over there, it's Canavoa Community Food Truck. So we're gonna provide food, hot meals, for people in our community, people in need in our community. So we're gonna uh, combat against food insecurity in our community. I'm so thankful to uh, government of Alberta, uh, government of Canada, and um, uh, Community Food Center Canada, uh, Food Rescue, so they are the main, uh, and uh, Breakfast Canada, they are the main partner in this project. So this project, with the COVID, we want to combat against food insecurity in our community. People are gonna just show up, and they, they, we have uh, online registration, uh, they can go online on our website. They're gonna have food, and uh, a good thing is we can provide food for you with our volunteers. So they are driving, and they're gonna bring food at your place. So today we have uh, donuts, veggies, beans, and rice. So next time we'll have some meatballs and macaroni. Yeah, and then uh, some vegetables, like today, for example, there are some of the people that talked about um, vegetarian uh, dishes. So we'll try our best next time to have that as well. 
So um, right now is since it's our first time, we're trying to see exactly like what people really need, and we have heard from so many people, and they are so happy with what we did. So next time we'll have more vegetables, rice. We'll have the meatballs. We'll have some uh, spaghetti for the kids as well. Edmonton Police matches words with actions, organizing engagement sessions across Edmonton. The next session is on October 20th from 6.30 to 8.30 p.m. at the Clairview Recreation Center. The St. Cunea Community Organization has moved to a new office in the historic John Bosco Building in the north of Edmonton. Diversity TV stopped by to chat with Executive Director Issa Kamara. We moved from downtown to the new office, 6770-129 Avenue. Uh, it has been very busy since the beginning of the COVID-19. We have received funding from the different levels of government to provide emergency support to families in the community, especially uh, vulnerable members of the community, youth, seniors. Uh, we have received two levels of funding from the Employment and Social Development Canada Department to provide food hampers to members of the community. We are waiting for the second disbursement. So far we have reached, our food hampers have reached over 500 individuals in the community, the African immigrant community. And uh, we expecting to reach more people with the new funding uh, that we are expecting the next couple of days. <clears throat> we do hope to reach up to a thousand people in the community. Uh, we are also very busy with our youth mentorship project, which has been going on for almost two years now. We are in the face of uh, matching our mentors with mentees, you know, so that the mentors will help this, the youth in our community to become youth leaders, so they could hone their skills to become youth leaders, to become mentors to other kids. And then, uh, our other very important project we are working on right now is the anti-racism project, which is funded by the province of Alberta. That has also been going on for over two years now. Uh, we have reached over uh, 75 youth and parents in the community. And what we have found very interesting so far since the beginning of COVID is that uh, the response, uh, the participation level in our activities, in our programs, have increased since the beginning of COVID-19. Initially, we were very confused. We didn't know what was going on. But as time went on and as the COVID unfolded, we also reinvented ourselves. We also found innovative ways to deliver our programs and services to our participants. So we have realized an increase in participation in the uh, in our programs, our youth mentorship, uh, anti-racism. Before, it was very difficult to mobilize parents because, as we all know, African parents are always busy working 24-7. But with the COVID, there has been uh, an, an increase in the number of parents att attending our sessions along with their children and youth. So we have actually seen a dramatic increase in uh, number of parents attending our services. We have also uh, seen an increase in the number of programs we are providing in the community. So everything has increased in a very positive way for the Sincunia Community Organization. And now let me leave you with this. A wife of three kids caught her husband getting married in church after telling her that he was going to work out of town. The lady he was getting married to sponsored his wedding with his legitimate wife in the Zambian capital of Lusaka. Uh,
Thank you for watching this week's Diversity TV Community Newscast. It's been your host, Raya Sampala. See you next week. As we have seen from demonstrations around the world, including Edmonton, and we saw dozens of hours of testimony at City Council, demand for social justice and systemic change is absolutely necessary. So our commitment to action is a new effort by EPS to really bring the voices of those that are the most uh, marginalized, underrepresented, and maybe uh, the voice that we don't traditionally hear, uh, to the forefront and really uh, begin to look at how can we find solutions and get input on the solutions as well uh, to build a better EPS. But there's a lot of officers out there that don't understand the traumas that a lot of people are, have. One of the guiding principles to our commitment to action is many entry points. We want to be able to go to community where they're at or have them come to us uh, in an accessible way as well. So you're able to log on to epsinput.ca and contribute your stories, your ideas and your experiences uh, to any of our engagement tools. And if you prefer, uh, we will come out to you and host a session in your community. And if your community prefers, uh, they can sign up for a, a toolkit where they can uh, facilitate a session with community members to again capture that input. So whether you're looking to contribute for three minutes or three hours or online or in person, we wanna make sure you're able to capture what you have to offer.